Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. It is now Wednesday, the 14th of October, 2020. Got a few things to discuss today, but nothing pressing out there, which is good. After quite a very busy season, we could use a little bit of a break. We're getting a little bit of a break, but there are a few areas to keep an eye on over the next several days, and that is also alluded to from this tweet that we saw this morning from Dr. Phil Klotzbach calling for above-normal Atlantic hurricane activity over the next couple of weeks, and he is citing large-scale atmospheric conditions that generally favor tropical cyclone activity in the Caribbean and potentially in the subtropics. And then this little addendum primarily during week two. So probably not this week, but more like next week. And we can look at some of these graphics and try to explain them a little bit. This is the upward motion here from the ECMWF, the EPS, the Ensemble Prediction System. And this is where we are right now. This is the current time. And going this way is the future, as an example, okay? And then you see the map where all of this is valid for. This is a Mercator projection map. And this is the area that we are most interested in right through here. It, well, at least for most of us. Uh, maybe you're interested in over here, too. But this is the area where we're most interested in. And right now, currently, we have this green that's pretty enhanced upward motion. Where? That's occurring right here. You understand? So you kind of match these up. So this is where we are now, and this is where we will be going in the future. So the, you know, if you were to put this on a scroll, you would move the time forward this way. The future, uh, you know, in other words, out at around the 25th of October, this area right here uh, would be projected over this area here. Does that make sense? I hope so. These Hovmuller diagrams are interesting to explain. So uh, on the other side of the coin, or in this case the globe, currently across this area of the Western Hemisphere, we have oranges and reds, which is sinking motion, not favorable for development. What's happening is by the time we get out to about the 19th of October or so, and then there until the end of October, then this area of the Western Hemisphere goes green. You see how that works? Yeah, that's how it works. So that's one of the factors that he's looking at and his team. This also shows the different vertical velocity profiles in a different manner. And right now, uh, generally favorable over in these longitudes, but becoming more favorable, uh, and this is a shorter time frame, becoming more favorable with the blues here showing up in the longitudes. And we're talking about um, east to west on the map, like going from east to west, 60 west longitude to 120 west longitude, whatever, um, coming up at about mid-month or so. This is the GFS. So the models are indicating better upward motion. And then the shear forecasts also, <clears throat> instead of breaking these down individually, the shear is forecast to decrease as well. So the bottom line, Dr. Klotzbach and his team are indicating a very busy, well, I want to say very, going to be accurate here, above normal activity over the next couple of weeks. So anything to keep an eye on now? Well, there's certainly stuff to keep an eye on, but there's nothing to worry yourselves about. Uh, we do have the vorticity down here bundled up fairly well in association with Invest Area 93L. Another piece of energy out here straddling the 10 degree latitude line right there. Some more uh, off the coast of Africa. We've got these pieces of energy hanging around in the subtropics. This is a piece of energy that moved through parts of the Canadian Maritimes yesterday out of Maine into parts of uh, Quebec Province and to Nova Scotia in that region bringing some thunderstorms. We saw one of our supporters up there, Hans. I love that name. And admittedly, it's because it reminds me of Hans Zimmer, the composer. Um, but the Hans that we know up in this part of the world, he's one of our Patreon supporters. Um, I don't know if he composes music, but he is very adept at reading the weather. I'm very impressed, and it's really neat to see. Anyway, Hans and everybody else up there, and even Jack, our good buddy Jack Sillen, 
in parts of Down East Maine yesterday. Probably got some thunderstorms and some rainy weather. Uh, the pattern's pretty progressive. These storm systems, progressive. You know what that means. They're moving along. This one's going to move along this way. Well, let me try that again. So this one's going to move along this way. This one will move along this way. And then there's more waiting in the wings. We're getting towards that time of year. You know, fall will lead into winter, and then we'll start watching for big winter storms. But it's still tropical season, and there's still a lot of energy, generally speaking, down in the tropics waiting to bundle together and become a tropical cyclone. We've got these heat sources, and that's just one more thing I'll say about this. These are heat sources down here, energy and heat and moisture. And they're just looking <clears throat> for the right environment to grow in. That's what it comes down to, generally speaking. It's more complicated than that, but that's the idea. So that was the vorticity signature. When you look at it from the spin in the atmosphere, this is the satellite animation, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits. And this is the system down in the Caribbean, or east of the Caribbean anyway, the far western reaches of the main development region, east of the Caribbean. And you can just look at this and tell there are strong upper level winds cutting across this, so that's not going to allow it to develop much. We have another pocket of energy out here. And it's really interesting this time of year. Have you guys noticed the tropical waves are not moving east to west fast anymore? They've slowed down tremendously. The trade winds are a lot different right now, and these tropical waves are just kind of lollygagging their way across, especially once they get off the coast of Africa. They're not moving very quickly. And um, that just shows you the time of year we're in. Things are changing, and there's just not as much of a push. But I'm going to tell you what, you look at that, that's a huge area of energy, moisture, and spin, just a little bit of turning out there, uh, just off the coast of the west coast of Africa, right off of the Dakar area, Cabo Verde, which is right there, the Cabo Verde Islands in here, Cape Verde Islands, if you want to call them that, that's fine. So there is energy. It's just not coming together just yet, which is fine. We've already had plenty of such events. We don't need any more, but we're on the lookout. So what about this? Well, there's a little bit of percolation. Is that a word? It's percolating. Um, it's trying to fester into an organized area of thunderstorms. But let's go back and look at the vorticity. Yeah, there's a little bit of energy there, a little bit. Some of that comes off of the mountainous terrain down here on the northwest coast of Colombia. Pretty fascinating how that works. And then, you know, every once in a while you get a tropical wave that comes in and a little piece of energy that spits off of the, uh, the continent there of South America, the northwest coast of Colombia, and it's just enough to give something the kick that it needs to get started. You just, you just never know when that's going to happen. Those are fairly small um, regional synoptic events instead of a large synoptic event like a giant tropical wave like the one off Africa that's much larger or a big cold front that comes through and you know it's a big synoptic state scale um, instead of sort of a more mesoscale oh that's kind of regional though not necessarily mesoscale but anyway just little nuances if you follow this stuff you kind of know what to look for so going back to the satellite imagery here again there's that shear cutting across you know, out of the Caribbean and across that system I took a snapshot here. Oh, forgot I had this. I wanted to zoom in. Ah, my fault. Um, we will show you the snapshot in just a second, I promise. First of all, let me point this out so you see definitely strong upper level winds. You can see the clouds being pulled away, kind of like if you took cotton candy and just stretched it out. Or if you don't want to have sugar, you can just get a big ball of cotton and stretch it out. You get the ideas. It looks very fibrous. I think that's also a word. I hope I'm not making up words today. It looks very fibrous, um, like fibers being torn apart. It's um, very nebulous, I guess you could say. The upper level wind is very strong. That being said, and this is why we look at these systems to make you aware of their existence. Now, down in Trinidad and Tobago, not related to the tropical wave, but there's some convection, but Farther to the north in Barbados up here, stretching up past there, you know, Guadalupe, Antigua, uh, St. Bart's, all the way over to the U.S. British Virgin Islands, and even Puerto Rico, this energy is going to be moving your way over time. This whole mass of clouds is going to be heading your way, and what do you see? You see there's some lightning, 
there's some larger blobs of showers and thunderstorms. And what do those do? Those create lightning. They create downdrafts. So you can get these downdrafts or downbursts of, of wind, 25, 35 knots, maybe stronger. You never know. And so you just got to be aware down here. You know, that this is heading your way. Uh, boating interest down there. I mean, wouldn't we all, I guess, with everything that's going on, love to be kicking it in the Caribbean, you know, on those sandy beaches down there. Maybe you're on some flat boat, um, you know, small sunfish or something, or a catamaran out there, just in a small dinghy, even a rubber raft. I would take that. And you're just chilling out. Well, you got to watch out for these storms that come up. These tropical waves are large. They're a big weather feature. They are not like these little pop-up storms, yeah, like, well, this, this is a pretty good cluster that formed over Puerto Rico. And that's a good example. That's isolated. That's different. That's from the heating of the day. This system, this tropical wave, you know, just keeping you aware of it. If you're down there enjoying the nice weather, uh, just be aware. This is moving through, and it could bring some gusty winds, locally heavy rain, and maybe a few lightning strikes. There's a few lightning strikes that went right through here. Yeah, you can see those little yellow speckles in there. It's amazing what the satellite imagery can pick out. So just keeping you on top of it. Now for the snapshot. So the tropical wave is located in here, generally speaking. And this is the analysis. This is what it looks like from the GFS 200 millibar to 850 millibar. That's like a, a range of the atmosphere. And that's the shear. So we're looking at about, let's just pretend, let me back up a little bit. We're looking at about that much of the air right here, just this vertical space. Uh, 200 millibars up here, 850 millibars down here, and the wind is blowing strong through there. I don't have a third hand. <laughs> I can. We need live augmented reality. So that's what's happening. The tropical waves coming in from this side, and those upper level winds are coming in from this side, in that range between 200 millibars up high and 850 millibars down low. 850 is about 5,000 feet. And that's cutting it across. It's cutting across and cutting the tops off. And as you know, as you should know, if these systems cannot vertically stack and bundle all this together, now it's all diffuse and nebulous, fibrous as I called it. It's just a tropical wave. And that's how most of these end up. Just kind of neat. Just wanted to point that out to you. That's what it looks like now. <clears throat> Current snapshot. Uh, for the GFS uh, from this morning at the, uh, like I said, 200 to 850 millibar level. And it's valid right about now as I'm putting together this video. So there you go. So what about the future? Well, let's take a look at the old GFS here. I've been really relying on this lately because the Euro has just been terrible with its tropical cyclogenesis. It's just not done a good job at picking out the birth of tropical systems this year. So we'll just keep looking at the GFS. It's not like it is like superior and far and away the winner, but it's doing it and it, it has done better, seems to be doing better generally speaking. So that's what we're going to look at today. I mean, honestly, we could spend an hour comparing all the models and neither you or me has the time to do that, you or I. So there's the tropical wave right there, 93L, represented fairly well in the modeling. And you notice there's really no other areas of concentrated vorticity, just little streamers here and there kind of random pieces of energy out there, not going to amount to anything. So let's move this into, uh, put it into motion, and we go out 24 hours. One thing that stands out, here's that cold front that's coming. Uh, we're going to be in the 40s and 50s in my neck of the woods. Yuck. I don't like it. I'm a warm weather guy. I got to admit. Um, I will say this. If it's 25 degrees and there's going to be 40 inches of snow and 50 mile an hour wind, sign me up. That's exciting. I enjoy that. There's something about it. If it's going to be 40 degrees, clear skies, no. <laughs> That's just a waste. Um, and I'd rather it just be hot. If you're going to have clear skies, let it be hot, or at least warm, so you can enjoy the outdoors and specifically the beach. I like the beach. I like the coastal areas. But anyway, that's the cold front coming, and it's going to get chilly behind it, so get ready. There's the tropical wave at 24 hours. And like I said, it'll be moving through. The U.S. British Virgin Islands, the northeast corner of the Caribbean. So my good friend Mirko down there that I know through the Internet only, he is a good friend. Lots of communications we've had with him since Irma, before Irma and after Irma. Mirko's down in St. Bartolome, 
um, and other people, Daniela down in Antigua, and other folks that we've gotten to know over the, the years. All of you, Carlos and Sam Juan, and Brent's going to be flying back from Mobile, Alabama, I guess to Miami and to St. Thomas, I suppose, tomorrow. He will have to deal with this tropical wave, too, as he goes home from the Delta, Hurricane Delta. Still have a hard time getting used to that. Um, he'll be heading home tomorrow, finally. Uh, the wave comes through a little bit sharp there. You see that? A little bit of an increase, mostly tomorrow. But then it goes through, gets tangled up in the vicinity of Dominican Republic. So some heavy rain there. We're now out at 72 hours. Uh, interesting feature here that we'll have to watch for possible subtropical development. Kind of spread out a mix of tropical and extra tropical or mid-latitude storminess. That's kind of a mutt, if you will, hybrid. Uh, 96 hours, pretty large feature there, well to the south-southeast of Bermuda, or just southeast. And at this point in time, by day four, you, know, you can start to see the convergence down here, some energy trying to focus in the vicinity of the southwest Caribbean uh, by day five. You know, we might very well have a named storm. Who knows? We'll see. Well to the southeast of Bermuda. And at this point, GFS trying to indicate something maybe gets going in the southwest Caribbean. We'll just have to see by day six. Yeah, still there. Maybe, maybe not. Day seven. And that's where we'll stop. It tries to coalesce to the south of Jamaica. Uh, but that's a week away. Again, as I've talked about often, we're just looking for signals. We're looking to see, can we read this into the future and latch on to something, see if it's consistent, and does it get closer into time and all that. I went over that in detail yesterday. Um, and it's still about a week out. So tomorrow is a big day. Does it move closer into the time frame? And by tomorrow afternoon, is it close enough that the global models are latching on to it, even just a couple of them, that the Hurricane Center issues one of those tropical weather outlooks. Tomorrow's the key day, I think. If it keeps getting pushed, well, let's wait till Friday. Let's wait till Saturday. And it's still a week out. Well, it just remains a figment of the model's imagination, even though that's not really a thing because it's just math and physics, a bunch of zeros and ones, right? I hope it can't think for itself. Then we're in trouble. Sometimes you wonder, though, right? You see some of those crazy runs. You're just like, geez, what is the GFS up to these days? But really, a few things to watch, but nothing to worry about, and that's the best news that I can bring you, all right? At least from my discipline of weather, hurricanes, and geography. You guys have a great rest of your day. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. Don't forget, if you are one of our current patrons, one of our crowdfunding supporters, through Patreon or Hurricane Track Insider. We've combined the two, basically. Tomorrow evening, 7.30 p.m., going to have sort of an online meeting uh, where I talk to you all through YouTube. It'll be unlisted, only available to our patrons, our supporters. We'll have a chat set up spe uh, specifically for this. And we're going to talk about where we've been and where we're going and some exciting things coming up. Once I'm done and I have finished it, it all and wrapped it up, I will make it available publicly for you guys to watch on the rest of Internet world. All right? All right. Might even try to get it to stream on Facebook Live as well tomorrow. We'll see. I have to think about that. Anyway, that's tomorrow night, 730 Eastern. I'll put the link on Patreon for our current patrons. Any level, doesn't matter. And we'll talk about what's next, especially. All right? All right. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.